Welcome back, everybody, to another week of Sunday School here at the Lighthouse Church of the Nazarene in Moravia, Iowa, where we are going through the book of John, and uh, right now we're in John chapter 10. We're continuing our way uh, through John chapter 10 here, just chapter by chapter, verse by verse. That's the best way to study the Bible. So when we left off in the middle of chapter 10, we're in verse 13, where Jesus contrasted himself um, with him being the good shepherd versus the hireling. And Jesus saying, I am the good shepherd. He says, I am the one who will give my life for the sheep. What will the hireling do? The hireling, he will just run away when danger comes. So we're right in the middle of chapter 10 of the book of John. Let's get out our Bibles. Let's follow along. John chapter 10, verse 14, where Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I am known by the Father, and I lay my life down for the sheep. Again, Jesus says, a good shepherd lives and dies for his flock. The, the hireling, they they only focus on themselves. What's in it for me? They don't care about anybody else. Um, if you remember last week when we went to Ezekiel chapter 34, where God condemned the, the, the false shepherds and the false prophets, he said, woe to the shepherds of Israel who feed themselves, should they not feed the flock of Israel? So, so God condemned them for just worrying about themselves. Verse 16, and this is Jesus talking, and he says, And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring in, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Now, who are these other sheep that Jesus is talking about here? Well, who are they? They're us, the, the Gentiles, the non-Jews. We have to remember, Jesus died for everybody, the entire world. First John 2, 2 says this, he said, it says, and he himself, Jesus, is the propitiation or, or the, the substitution for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. There's another spot, and it's in the book of Galatians, and it's Galatians 3.28, which says there's neither Jew nor Greek, nor slave nor free, nor male nor female, but we are all one in Christ Jesus. Now, there's there's other, what we would refer to as Christian cults. They take this verse right here, uh, 16, where it says, and other sheep I have that are not of this fold, them too I must bring in. They try to claim that it's about them, but no, it's about all the Gentiles. So let's keep going here. Verse 17. This is still Jesus talking. Therefore, my father loves me because I lay my life down that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have the power to lay it down and I have the power to take it again. This command I have received from my father. Two things here. First off, anybody can lay down their life for somebody else. Anybody can die, but only Jesus, the one and only. He's the only one that can take it up again. And another thing here that I want to point out. Notice Jesus says, my father loves me because I do his will. You know, this command I have received from my father. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down myself. I have the power to lay it down and I have the power to take it again. This command I have received from my father. Jesus always did what the father's will was. Um, and that's what we need to remember. We need to do the will of the father. I know that's a simple thing, but we need to remember that. Um, there was one time, it's in uh, Luke chapter 11, where a woman says, uh, blessed is the womb that bore you and the breast that nursed you. And then she's talking to Jesus. And what does Jesus say? He goes, no, more than that, blessed are those who hear the word of God and do it. it friends, we, we are to be doers of the word. Uh, the book of James tells us that, be doers of the word and not hearers only. First John 3, 18 says this, says, uh, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in action and truth. We need to be doers of the word at all the time. Let's keep going here. Verse 19. Therefore, there was again a division among the Jews because of these saints. And many of them said, this man has a demon and is mad. Why do you listen to him? Others said, these are not the words of one who has a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? Now it says here that there was a division among them. Jesus does cause divisions because you're either for him or you're against him. There, there's only two classes of people in the world. There, there, there are those who are his sheep and have their names written in the Lamb's Book of Life who are on the narrow road going through the narrow gate. And there are those who are not his sheep, who are going to spend all of eternity separated from him, who are on the broad 
road going through the broad gate. There are only those two classes of people. So, verse 22. Now, it was the Feast of Dedication in Jerusalem, and it was winter. We just had a two-month gap between verse 21 and verse 22, because clear back since chapter 7, we've, we've been during the Feast of Tabernacles, or the Feast of Booths, where they would um, make little huts for themselves, and for a week just camp out in their little huts underneath the stars to commemorate their wandering through the wilderness when God provided everything that they need for. So from se chapter 7 up until now, they've been at the Feast of um, Tabernacles. Now where are they at? Notice it was, now it was the Feast of Dedication. What What is this Feast of Dedication? I don't remember reading about that in Leviticus. Well, that's because you wouldn't read about it in Leviticus. The Feast of Dedication, also known as Hanukkah, also known as Feast of Lights, this is an eight-day celebration, and it celebrates the Maccabean revolt against a serious king, king named Antiochus Epiphanes. That was a name that he gave himself. Epiphanes, it means the glorious one or the exalted one, the brilliant one. So he was the self-proclaimed exalted one. The Jews, they, they actually referred to him as Antiochus Epimenes, which means the crazy one. So a lot of people refer to that because he was crazy. When Antiochus Epiphanes came in, what did he do? He killed people. He killed over 80,000 Jews and sold another 80,000 into slavery. He made it illegal to have any copy of the law. Any any uh, parent that uh, practiced circumcision on their son, they would be executed and have their child tied around their neck. Now, this lasted, for, I think, three years until Judas the Maccabees, led by Judas Maccabees, went rose up and defeated Antiochus Epiphanes. And when they defeated him, what did they do? They, they went into the temple and they relit the seven branch candlestick, the candelabra. The thing is they only had enough oil for one day, but miraculously it burned for eight days. So that's what the Feast of Dedication is. It, it's when the Maccabees um, rose up and defeated Antiochus Epiphanes. And we got to remember that that took place, the Maccabean revolt, it took place during what we call the intertestamental period, the 400 years between the book of Malachi and, and when Jesus came to the earth in the book of Matthew. So it wasn't a biblical feast. Israel was never commanded to keep it, but yet we can see that they did. Now, this actually has um, application for us because there are people today who say, why do we celebrate Christmas? There's no spot in this Bible that tells us that we should celebrate Christmas. We should celebrate the birth of Jesus. Well, there was no place in the Bible that says that they should celebrate the Feast of Lights, but they were doing it anyway, correct? All right, verse, where are we at? Verse 23, and Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Solomon's porch, it's referred to quite a bit in the book of Acts, I believe. It's where Peter and John healed the lame man. That's in Acts 3.11. Um, it's also where it says that they were gathered in one accord, Acts 5.12. So Solomon's porch shows up quite a bit. It runs along the east side of Herod's temple is what I know about it. Verse 24, then the Jews surrounded him and said, how long do you keep us in doubt? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Now, Jesus has told them over and over and over again that he is the coming Messiah. He says, I am, the, I am in the Father and the Father is in me. I have been sent from heaven and I will return there. He said before Moses was, I am. These guys were not seeking. They, they were just wanting to doubt. Now, here's a question. Is there a difference between doubt and unbelief? I, I believe there is. When If you doubt, you're searching for an answer. You want to know the answer. Uh, unbelief, doesn't care. These guys, they don't care. If you remember in the book of Acts, I believe it's in chapter 17, there's a group of people that are referred to as the Bereans. And what did the Bereans do? They searched the scriptures daily to see if the things that were being spoken to them were true. That's the great thing about Christianity. It, it, it can survive the scrutiny. You, you need to be looking up and make sure that what we believe is actually true. And so these guys, they didn't want an answer. They just said, you know, they, they were trying to be stubborn here. Verse 25, Jesus answered them, I told you and you do not believe me. The works that I do in my father's name, they bear witness of me. Verse 26, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep as I said to you. Now, some people will take this verse right here and say, see, this is, this is divine election right here. Jesus says, you don't believe because you aren't my sheep. That but you can also take that the other way and say it could easily just as say 
you aren't my sheep because you do not believe. If you would believe, you would be of my sheep. Warren Wearsby, he's a commentator I really like. He, he said it best. He said, divine election and human responsibility are, are perfectly balanced in the Bible. It wasn't that they couldn't believe, that, that God had made it impossible for them to believe, that they just chose not to. The, the Bible tells us, whosoever will come and drink freely from the water of life. So let's keep going here. Verse 27, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hands. My father who gave them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hands. Now, a couple of things here. This, first off, Jesus said, I give them eternal life. It's a gift. It, Jesus gave it to us. We didn't earn eternal life. It's given to us. The one other thing I want to touch on here, and this is a big verse for people that say, it's a saying, once saved, always saved. They say, you know, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hands. No one will snatch them out of my father's hands. This is one of the, this is probably the main verse for people that say, once you're saved, you're always saved. It's something called the perseverance of the saints. If you've ever thought, heard of that term. It's also called the preservation of the saints. This verse right here in John 6, 39 are the two big verses for, for that for that belief, that doctrine, or that theology. And John 6, 29 says, this is the will of my Father. Of all he's given me, I should lose nothing. Well, I really don't like that term, once saved, always saved. But I also don't like the people saying, well, you think that you can lose your salvation. No, I don't think you can lose your salvation. I've never lost one hour of sleep worrying about losing my salvation. But I do believe this. I do believe that people can walk away from Christ. And I do that because Jesus said this. It's in Matthew 24, 13. Jesus said, he who endures to the end will be saved. Revelation 2 says, Jesus says, be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. And there's one other verse here. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. There's actually a ton of verses here that we could go through talking about this, but we only have 15 minutes to talk about. This is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 and 2, where, it's where Paul says, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received, in which you stand, by which also you are saved. It's the gospel of Jesus. By which also you are saved, if you hold fast that word which I preached to you, unless you have believed in vain. If, if, if the word if gets thrown in there, that's conditional. It says, if you hold fast the word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. Like I already said, I don't believe you can lose your salvation. I do believe that people can walk away from Christ. We see it in the Bible. There's a man named Demas that shows up. Um, in, the, in the end of the book of Philemon, the Apostle Paul says, Philemon is here with me. In the Colossians 4.4, 4, Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. And then we get to 2 Timothy 4.10. And Paul says, Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world. Demas was an example in the Bible of somebody who walked away. In real life, there was a man named Charles Templeton. He, he was preaching the same time Billy Graham was. Charles Templeton was filling up stadiums. It said that he was a better preacher than Billy Graham. Do you know what Charles Templeton did? He walked away and said, nope, I don't believe it. So I know some people say, well, he was just never saved in the first place. He was filling stadiums and he was telling people that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And the Bible tells us nobody can do that except by the power of the Holy Spirit. Anyway, that's all we're going to touch on that right here. I don't know. If you want to talk to it, reach out to me. I'll talk about it with you. But anyway, let's get back into John chapter 10 here. Uh, where are we at? Somehow I lost my place. John chapter 10. Verse 30, this is where Jesus says, I and my Father are one. It doesn't get any clearer than this. In the 14th chapter of John, Philip's going to tell Jesus, say, hey, show us the Father, and it's sufficient for us. And Jesus goes, have I been with you so long? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father, the, 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 the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They're all God. It's, it's right here in the Bible. Verse 31. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Now, why did they stone him? That's what they should have done for the penalty for blasphemy. It, if you or I claim to be God, we'd have been stoned. Jesus was God. But according to Leviticus 24, that was blasphemy. So that's why they're going to stone him. Verse 32. 
Jesus answered them, Many good works I have shown you from my father. For which of these works do you stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we do not stone you, but for blasphemy, because you being a man make yourself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said you are gods? If he called them gods, to whom the word of God came and scripture cannot be broken, why do you say of the, him who the Father sanctified and sent into the world, you are blasphemed because I said I am the Son of God? If you do not... If I do not do the works of my father, do not believe me. But if I do believe me, though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and believe that the father is in me and I in him. Let's go back to this verse 34 where Jesus said, is it not written in your law? I said, you are God. What that is, that, that's Psalm 82, 6. It, and the, the actual Hebrew word is Elohim. Elohim means supreme one, mighty one, the judge. But it can also refer to earthly judges and that's what it is right here, a little g. And, and what Jesus is saying is, hey, if, if you refer to these human people as little g's, gods, why, why are you mad at me? Because I'm saying the same thing. And so if you go to Psalm 82, 6, it, it, I'm going to turn there real quick, just because this is kind of important. Psalm 82, 6 is talking about earthly judges. I'm going to read it for you really quick. And this is the verse that Jesus was referring to there. I said, you are gods and all children of the most high, but you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. So that's, that's what it's, it was using the word Elohim, but it was using it as the earthly term judge, because there are a lot of different terms for God in the Bible. You have Yahweh, which means the Lord. I am. You, you have Abba, which means father. It's a term of endearment. It's a intimate word. You have El Shaddai, that, that's the term for God, which means God Almighty. You have Jehovah Jireh, which means the Lord will provide. The, the, the term was Elohim right there. That, that is kind of a tough part of scripture right there. So where are we at? We're in verse 39. Therefore they sought again to seize him, but he escaped out of their hands. I, I believe this, I don't see Jesus running away from him. I think it was just another miracle. And he went away again to the place where John was baptizing at first, and there he stayed. Then many came to him. And they said, John performed no sign, but all the things that John spoke about this man were true. And many believed in him there. Isn't it? It was so easy to believe in Jesus, wasn't it? it was, everybody's like, hey, John the Baptist, he's pointing at this guy and he didn't even perform any miracles, but this guy's performing all of these miracles. Now, one last thing I want to say, Jesus didn't run away and hide. It just wasn't his time yet. He's going to go hang out here for a little while until he goes back to Jerusalem. So we're done with John chapter 10. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And if you disagree with me on anything, reach out to me. I love to talk about it. Anyway, I hope to see you the same time, same place next week. Bye.